Friends of Story Family salute, y'all. It's your boy Tim Snow. And I'm back here today with another reason why you don't want to go to prison. And maybe even a good reason why you don't want to work in one of them things, man. It ain't worth it. Inside of these institutions, man, there's a lot of different type of um, personalities, a lot of type of people, different races, different ages, different uh, mentalities. You got baby boomers. You got guys from the Great Depression. You got guys, Vietnam veterans. Man, it's just like a big old mix of everybody that's on the inside. And if you don't know how to mingle, if you don't know how to associate with men and do all that other type of stuff, then you're going to be in trouble. You're going to be the one sticking out. And inside of these institutions, man, you will find out that there is a lot of crazy stuff that goes on and a lot, a lot of weird people. Like uh, you're not going to prison three, four, five times without having something going on in your life. I'm the first one to admit that. You know what I mean? Most people learn their lesson the first time and not come back. So when you're repeating offending, something ain't right. You know what I mean? You got to look at yourself on the inside and figure it out. But to me, probably the worst guys on the inside were those gunners, man. And that's exactly what we call them in Texas, them badass gunners. And they cannot control themselves. And it is really, really weird. I know you're probably thinking to yourself, well, what is a gunner, Tim? It's kind of hard to explain on YouTube with the rules and everything like that. But a gunner? is a man that will take any opportunity, and I mean any opportunity, to touch himself anywhere, any place, any time, no matter who's around, what's going on, or where he's at, man. And I promise you, there's so many of them, it's damn crazy. Pretty much all the prison murders that I know of recently were guys killing their cellies in Texas. Two cellmates fighting in the middle of the night, one lived, one died. And uh, I'm here to tell you from experience, nine times out of ten, they woke up and caught their cellie gunning, man. And they wasn't about to put up with it. Not at all. That's something that you got to get understood when you move into a cell, homeboy. If you do that type of stuff, you let me know so I can get up out of here. You do it when I'm not in here, but you better not do it while I am here. And I swear there's some guys that are so sick. So perverted, so energized with that sexual frustration that they can't control themselves. They'll be laying up there looking at a picture of some woman touching themselves on the top bunk while you're down there asleep on the bottom bunk. And I promise you, as a man, you do not want to ever wake up and see nothing like that. Hey, unfortunately, the real honest truth is, too, though, that the cell is not the only place these guys will do this at, man. And they'll do it almost anywhere. There was a thing they called pocket pool where the guys literally have pockets in their pants specked in, cut them out, and play pocket pool. You can figure out the rest. Do it in class. They do it in the child hall. They do it everywhere, man. And honest to goodness, the biggest riot in Texas between the Crips and the Tongos actually started between a, a well, started because a young Crip, they said, was mentally disabled, was playing pocket pool in the chow hall. And some Mexican guys were sitting at the table with them, cracked them dead over the head with a pitcher of juice. After that, the whole prison went up. People got hurt bad behind that. The guy was mentally disabled, but he still shouldn't have been doing that there. And then he probably wasn't even the only one in the chow hall doing it that day. That's the crazy part. And uh, we have a terrible story here I'm about to read you. Very, very unfortunate Ferguson unit where a man was in the classroom playing pocket pool teacher called her multiple times and then he raped her and the system didn't even want to help the lady one of the main reasons that you do not want to enter into the texas prison system or any prison system is when they say industrial complex prison industrial they're not kidding it's a giant machine produces things makes money it's a giant profitable organization for the state of texas and if you try to get them gears stopped they'll grind you doesn't matter if you're an employee, if you're an inmate, probably if you're a damn warden, the system will roll you over. And that's what it's made to do. And this story here I'm about to read you is real unfortunate, but this is a true story. It did happen. The lady had to beg the governor of the state of Texas for help. And then they finally prosecuted the guy. But why she had to beg for help, I don't understand. A Texas prison teacher tearfully called on Governor Greg Abbott to charge inmate as she says raped her to understaff lockup north of Huntsville. 
Hold on one second, sorry. Nicole Trulove plans to file a lawsuit against the state over the November 13th sex assault inside Ferguson Unit classroom with no working cameras and no guards in sight. This should have never happened. It could have been easily avoided, her attorney said. And if changes aren't made by the Department of Criminal Justice, this will happen again. Whoever made the decision to understaff that unit, they should be held accountable. So they're saying Ferguson Unit was understaffed on purpose, y'all. Think about it. The department said it is conducting an internal review and has transferred the prisoner to another facility. The 25-year-old has a history of drug and burglary convictions. While correctional settings present a unique challenge, the department is committed to providing a safe work environment from all, TDCJ spokesman said. True Love had only been on the job for a few days when she spotted an inmate masturbating in class, playing pocket pool. After repeated warnings, she wrote him up. So she caught the man multiple times. It was so dang normal, she just gave him warnings. Did it so many times in her face that she had to write him up. But when class let out, the four-time felon stayed back hiding behind the door. Damn. The officers assigned to the area were nowhere in sight when the violent prisoner allegedly grabbed True Love by their hair by her hair and slammed her against the door before assaulting her and threatening her children's lives. The new teacher reported the attack immediately and went to the hospital for a rape kit. Yet there has not been one charge filed. Mr. Abbott, when will these charges be filed? She asked. Lindsay and co-counsel Randall I'm sorry, I can't say his name. Randall Kalinin blamed unit security shortfalls for the attack. There were no cameras inside the classroom and the lack of windows and the solid door made it possible for him to hide behind it. Allowing violent felons to masturbate in front of female employees creates one of the most hostile work atmospheres I've ever heard of. Combined with known blind spots and a lack of guards is the most irresponsible behavior ever. President of the Huntsville-based Texas Correctional Employees Union said there are staffing policies in place to assure that this wasn't happening. Can there be a correctional officer stationed in every classroom or next to every teacher's desk? Of course not. It's no secret that staffing is low and these inmates are not dumb or blind to it. They will use it to their advantage in any way possible. Inmate on staff violence has risen slightly in recent years. By the end of September, Texas prisons had seen 67 serious staff assaults in 2017. Last year, the total reported major assaults on staffs numbered more than 100 for the first time in at least 10 years. So there were more than 100 assaults on staffs, which are usually very serious when they happen. Former Union Chief Lance Lowry pointed to the latest incident as evidence of staffing shortages, and he warned about repeated incidents may occur. So literally, guys, they run the prisons understaffed on purpose, okay? It's this money-saving thing. When when we were on Beto, we very rarely ever got to go to rec, maybe once or twice a week at the most. When it was rec time, they'd announce short of staff, sorry. That was what it would say every day, short on staff, sorry. Short on staff, sorry. Would never be a time where we can go to rec. The guys looked gray. They needed oxygen, couldn't get it. And the only time they could go outside was the field squad. So that was kind of bad, you know. But when we're uh, dealing with people like this, people that are in there for sexual assaults, people that are in there for murders and things like that, and they're not even protecting their own staff, imagine how you would feel as the inmate when you sit down at a table to go eat your food or watch that TV and some guy's pocket pulling right there next to you. What are you going to do?